Hey, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Look at all our beautiful Crystal family already in here and waiting for today. I'm so excited to bring this to you because I did a poll on YouTube a little while, a few weeks ago, asking what the most, I guess, popular topic was that you guys wanted to hear about and something to do with crystals um, to help empaths was high on the list. So uh, today we're going to cover Empath Everyday Survival Guide. And that's what I'm going to give to you today. It's about crystals and secrets for sensitive souls. So how does that sound? All right. And this is so you can avoid emotional hangovers that many of us experience, exhaustion and sensory overload. Um, how many of you have been dealing with that as of late? OK, so let's go ahead and jump in here to the content. So. I told you about that poll that I did and um, that I found out that this topic was the most requested. So, and I'm there with you guys, you know, um, do you feel like you, especially when you're with a lot of people, you feel like you have no shield up between you and them, or do you classify yourself as a sensitive soul, a sensitive person? Do you find yourself often in situations where you get energetically exhausted? Um, are you a light worker, an energy worker, or a body worker of any kind, massage therapist? This kind of work, working with others, can really zap the energy right out of you if you don't know how to mitigate that. It's really important to protect yourself and protect your energy with an energetic shield of protection, and crystals can help you to do that, okay? Do you ever feel unexplainably uncomfortable with an environment, a place, a situation, a person? Do you get those feelings often? That's your sign that you're picking up on something that's in disharmony with you, okay? It might not feel that way to everyone else, but it's in disharmony with you. An empath, and I looked in different places to find a good definition of this, but I found a good one on Urban Dictionary. I love that dictionary. For some things, it's quite funny. <laughs> Look up Mercury Retrograde. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if they've changed it recently. But anyway, so an empath defined there at Urban Dictionary is a person who is capable of feeling the emotions of others, despite the fact that they themselves are not going through the same situation. Don't you think that's a perfect definition of what an empath is? So... Empaths or highly sensitive people can feel everything to an extreme, more so than others. And that's okay if it doesn't bother you, if it's not affecting you. But if it is, it can lead to some things like feeling tired, feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, um, sensory overload, stressed out anxiety, general anxiety. So, so many people are, are feeling anxiety and feeling too much of things. And that can lead to um, adrenal burnout. You know, it, it's kind of like a, a chicken or the egg kind of quandary. You know, is this leading to adrenal fatigue or is adrenal fatigue leading to the anxiety? There's evidence that going both ways. Okay. Um, and you, adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue in general is a place you don't want to be because that can generate the anxiety and um, panic attacks in and of itself, okay, just something to note. Um, so the ability to pick up on and feel, experience the energy of others can be seen as a gift because that extra information, that extra data you're getting can allow you to empathize with others or see things from another point of view, opposite of a sociopath, right? Um, no judgments here. I know there's a lot of stuff going on on YouTube with that, but a sociopath cannot empathize and cannot feel what others are feeling. So it can be seen also, on the other hand, as a curse. And if you're suffering side effects from being an empath, you might be viewing it as that because you're, it, it's causing you to be bombarded with these extra feelings and emotions you might not even want to be dealing with because it's not your stuff, right? So we're beings of energy and therefore we are affected by energy. We're made of these trillions of cells transmitting and receiving energy all the time. 
And um, those of you who are students in my Certified Crystal Healer course know I love Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's a developmental biologist. And he says that our cell membranes are actually liquid crystal semiconductors, okay, made of silica. That's what quartz is made out of, silicon dioxide. So these liquid crystal semiconductors have these gates and channels that open and close and they selectively let some stuff in and they selectively keep some stuff out. And he says that our DNA actually scans our environment for relevant frequencies and then reshapes itself accordingly. We can actually see this happening under the microscope. So if we think about this, you bring the right crystal into that environment and you can adjust your cell's perception filters and transmute the energy it, of your environment for you by bringing crystals into your environment. So the goal here for the empaths and the sensitive souls is to create an environment that makes you feel good, right? We wanna steer clear of becoming overstimulated and overwhelmed. So you're like, yeah, great, how do I do that? <laughs> okay, so two things, be highly selective of the situations and environments you place yourself in. We don't have control over everything, but we have control over some of the things. So be highly selective of those things. And two, have tools and supports at the ready, like crystals and stones, to help mitigate when you don't have control over those situations. So we have control over this and we can use crystals as our friends, our allies, as tools and supports to assist us in achieving this goal. You can definitely do this without crystals. So I, I always say that you can definitely do this without crystals, but crystals are a tool. And the physics definition of a tool is something that allows you to do the work with less effort, with less energy. So if you'd like the extra assistance, and if you already love crystals, why not? use them as an ally in doing this, work together with them. There are a couple of crystals that I like to use for this. Now, certain crystals can neutralize and transmute the energetic frequencies so they don't carry specific frequencies that may resonate with those bad feelings, thereby amplifying them, right? We want to transmute and neutralize them. So here are a few of my favorite crystals for that. I'm actually going to talk to you about seven of them, and I hope I remember to bring them all here. Okay, so we've got black tourmaline. All right, everybody loves black tourmaline. Everybody probably has a piece of black tourmaline. Black tourmaline is great for transmuting energy. It's wonderful for that. All right. Another one for that is smoky quartz. Smoky quartz is great for not only transmuting the negative energy, but actually detoxifying an environment, detoxifying anything, even your body. Smoky quartz. Now you want to work with true smoky quartz, not irradiated smoky quartz. So if your smoky quartz looks almost black and not brown. And I hope you can see, this is like really a rich coffee brown. Isn't it gorgeous? It's from Namibia, Africa. Um, if it looks almost black, chances are it's irradiated. Yeah, it's giving off radiation. Get out your Geiger counter, stay away from it. I prefer not to use it. Um, the next one on my list is amethyst. And I'm always showing you this one because I have it always right here nearby me. I keep it near my workspace. Isn't this one gorgeous? Oh my God. It's that grape jelly amethyst from Uruguay. And I know it's a, it's a beauty. It's an absolute beauty. Now you don't have to have all of these crystals. These are just a few. Um, there's others and these, these are the ones that I like most for this purpose. You can just work with one or two of them. Okay, now purple jade. Now, you're not going to get bowled over by how this one looks because it's probably almost going to look gray. This is rough purple jade. Okay, let me show you. Let me put a little bit of water on it because when you go to a gem show and you're looking for purple jade, it's probably going to be, if it's rough, it's going to be in a bucket of water because let me show you what the water does is it actually brings out the color. Can you see that there? So it brings out the color. It's being washed out a little bit by this bright diva light that I have in front of me right now. But um, when you cut and polish this for lapidary purposes, it stays that color that it looks like when it's wet. Okay, purple jade 
is beautiful and it is rare. It's harder to find. Um, it's all about spiritual knowledge and it's associated, of course, with the crown chakra and the third eye chakra. But interestingly enough, it's also associated with the earth star chakra, which is about six inches below our feet. So it's very grounding for us and a great protective stone for empaths, not your usual pick, not a real popular one. It's not super expensive. Um, this size, because it's rough and it's really meant for people who are going to be doing lapidary jewelry, making things like that. A piece like this size is about $100, just to give you um, an idea, but it's a pretty chunky piece. All right, another one is lodestone, which is magnetic magnetite. Not all magnetite still retains its magnetic properties, but we really like magnetite, the magnetic kind, which we call lodestone, because of that natural magnetic energy. Um, the magnetite can balance the polarities within our EMF field, within our auric field. So thereby it's going to help strengthen, stabilize and balance your energy field while helping with any kind of psychic overload or taking on too much like the energy picked up by body workers, light workers, energy workers. Another one is Sugi Light. And I really like Sugi Light. This is a rough piece and I'm not going to, I don't think, well, okay, I'll go ahead and wet it because that'll probably brighten up a little bit. Um, you can call on the energy of Archangel Michael when working with Sugi Light because this stone really aligns itself well with Archangel Michael to create this energetic shield of protection around you. Um, so Sugi Light is one that allows you to work more closely with Archangel Michael and aligns you, uh, helps balance your um, electromagnetic field enhances the third eye and crown chakra as well. And um, just great with assisting to keep up that shield. Okay, and the last pick, so I think this is number seven, right? Black obsidian, all right? I usually advise to only go to black obsidian if you feel like you really need powerful protection, like you're calling on a bodyguard because it has the tendency for some, not everybody, but for some people, the majority of people to bring them down to a low, low state if they're really not in need of the heavy duty kind of protection. So be, um, you know, discriminating if whether or not you should be working with black obsidian because you don't want to ground too much and bring in maybe a low grade depression or things like that if you're not prepared for the work that black obsidian does. So I would only really use this if, if something major serious is going on and you need like a really big boost of protection. Okay. So next, now I told you about seven crystals. Next, I want to tell you about some specific ways you can work with these crystals so you can use them effectively. And, you know, reading or watching this about what crystal is good for this, what crystal is good for that is great, but never actually putting them to use is you just circling around the base of the mountain and never getting to the peak, right? It's a lateral move. You're not taking a step forward. You're not getting closer to the peak. So it's no use to know the correspondences, but have no practical ways to work them into your everyday life. So I like to always give practical everyday uses for crystals. And so I'm going to share a highly effective crystal shielding visualization technique um, that I wanna tell you about. We're also gonna do some Q and A at the end. And remember I said at the beginning, if we get to a hundred shares of this live stream, if you haven't already shared, please click share into the newsfeed right now. I'm going to randomly choose three of you to send out my Ancestor Energy Mojo Kit if we can get to 100 shares. All right, we always do. I have yet to think of a time we haven't gotten to them. So thank you so much if you've already shared. And uh, let me tell you about those Mojo Kits a little bit. Excuse me while I drink some water. All right, I've got rosemary in here, organic, dried rosemary, organic marjoram, I've got these little, um, what are these little pods? They start with a P. They look like little pumpkins in there. There's dried organic clove in here. There's some beautiful clear quartz points for amplification. Um, I put essential oils in here of cinnamon. It smells like pumpkin spice latte, clove. Um, there's, some of these have different crystals. Some have snowflake obsidian. 
Some have black obsidian arrowheads. So all good stuff that you're looking for for this time of the year. You know, some of you know the veil is getting thinner. Some of you want to do some ancestor work. These are excellent mojo kits to help you do all of that. And I've got three of them if we can get to 100 shares of this live stream. Okay. And again, if you want to create that sacred space of your own with my guidance on how to use crystals to do that, you can subscribe to my newsletter and you can get that gift at hibiscusmoongift.com. Okay. All right. And let's see, I've got like an agenda here to follow so I don't forget anything. All right. So now we let's get to those practical steps, right? That's what you want to know about. So one thing you can do is simply meditate with any of these crystals, even just spending five minutes in meditation, just paying attention to deep breathing, just feeling your breath. There's not, nothing to do. Just sit there with the crystal either in hand or put it on your heart chakra and sit in meditation. All right. With the intention at the beginning of your meditation that this is going to help transmute the energy that's entering your electromagnetic field. All right, another thing you can do is you can create a protective transmuting shield around your home or your workspace or wherever you might be, even in a car, all right? You can place larger crystals in specific locations like one near your front door, one near the back door, or you can go around to the four corners of your property. Most properties have four corners. Some are oddly shaped and might have more, but one at each corner of the property and create an outdoor grid for your home. I really like black tourmaline for that. That's my favorite stone to go to for doing that. Okay, now let's talk about that. Uh, let's see what I have. I have it here. The crystal shielding visualization technique. Okay, so the crystal shielding visualization technique. This is a crystal induced energetic safeguard that's going to help shield you from anything that you sense as harmful or anxiety inducing or just stress causing, you feel it is negative or toxic in some way. All right, so you can use this at work. If you've been cornered by that negative relative at a gathering, you know, or getting ready to go into the holiday season, you know, they might catch you in the corner and you're like, oh no. <laughs> or maybe before doing any kind of energy work with other people. Remember, that's very important to think about that. You can think of this as a protection or a shield, a literal energetic shield. It's highly effective in creating, helping you create boundaries where you get to neutralize any negative forces or perceived negative forces. They might not necessarily be that, but if you're perceiving it that way, then that's what it is before it hits you, but still allowing good vibes to still penetrate. Okay. So how many of you are science fiction geeks like me and uh, remember shields up in Star Trek? Shields up. Well, you can even say that when you're getting ready to do this crystal shielding visualization technique is just shields up. So keep a little pouch with a tumbled black tourmaline. And I say tumbled because when you keep a pouch of crystals together, they tend to rub together and kind of ruin the aesthetics, break off little chips and things like that. So when you go with tumbled stones for these little little kits, little mojo kits like this one, um, they tend to maintain their integrity longer, better. All right, so keep this little pouch with a tumbled black tourmaline or smoky quartz, maybe two of each, one of each, it doesn't really matter, um, in your pocket or your backpack or your purse, somewhere where you're bringing your stuff with you and just make that as part of the stuff that goes out with you. All right. Or if you you just know you're going to need it because you're going to that gathering or you want to have one at work in a desk drawer and one at home and one in your car. And whenever you feel like you need the shields up, pull the stones out, and place them in your hands. If possible, this isn't always possible, but if possible, get grounded by earthing if possible. How do you do that? Take your shoes off and put your feet on the ground. If it's too cold to do that, take your gloves off. Put your bare hands on a tree, okay? Tree hugging, it works, all right? So this is how you get grounded. This is earthing, all right? And it actually helps to dissipate excess positive vibes or positive ions off of you and actually physically ground you, electrically ground you to the planet. All right, so next you're gonna close your eyes and connect to your breath. 
and feel the breath going in and out. If you want to do this with me now while I'm explaining it, go ahead. Just feel the breath going in and out as you allow your body's electromagnetic field to merge with the electromagnetic field of the crystal or crystals in your hand. And you're allowing them to entrain or influence your energy as you build up your energetic shield. Now picture a strong, impenetrable, large egg-shaped force field of energy enveloping your body. It's large going as far out as your arms can reach to your sides in front of you and several feet above your head and below your feet all around this large energetic egg shaped force field. And within the protection of this shield, you feel the intention of feeling yourself grounded, stable and centered. And those crystals are going to help you to do that. Bye, everybody. Crystal blessings. Namaste. Bye-bye.